How's it going? I'm Je <laughs> <Not> James. <laughs> and I'm Sarah. All right. How's it going? I'm Sarah and he's James and we're the Hold or Nothing. And we are in Potsy in Bolivia. It's one of the highest cities in the world at over 4,000 meters. And it's the height of summer and it's bloody freezing. <laughs> One of the first things you'll notice on your way into Potosi is the out-service train tracks. They're a hangover from its heyday when this city was the richest place in the world. And that's all because of this mountain that once contained one of the world's largest silver reserves and in turn changed the course of history. Another thing you'll notice straight away in Potosi is the grandeur of many of its buildings, many of which are now falling apart. Because following centuries of exploitation by the Spanish, Potosi is now all but empty of silver and it continues its decline into one of the poorest cities in the world. But the dramatic history and the crumbling beauty of its architecture is what continues to make Potosi one of the most popular places to visit in Bolivia. So we've not got very far because it's really cold outside and we're hungry. So we stopped to get a tostado. It's not very nice though, is it? It's a bit dry. <laughs> it's like sawdust. <laughs> the coffee's really nice though. Nice Christmas tree. With an altitude of over 4,000 metres above sea level, the conditions in Potosi are harsh and if you haven't yet acclimatised, you'll find it difficult to breathe even just walking around. So if you've just arrived in Bolivia, take it steady, drink plenty of water and use coca leaves. You can go up to the rooftops on many of Potosi's buildings and churches. Our favourites were Iglesia La Merced, La Catedral and Torre de la Compañía de Jesús. So that big hill behind us over there is called Cerro Rico, which means rich mountain in English. Um, and that's where all the silver mines are. And we are going to be going tomorrow. Inside. Yeah, inside. Into the belly. Into the belly, into the dark, underground. And we're going to be finding out all about this fella, El Tio, the god of the underworld and protector of Potosi's mines. We spent the afternoon exploring some more of the city's incredible architecture and of course in the evening we stopped off for a beer or two to wrap the night off. We thought long and hard about whether we were going to do a tour of the mines in Potosi, about the safety and the ethics of poverty tourism like this. In the end, we decided to do it because we wanted to see for ourselves the human cost that comes with luxuries such as silver. We filmed a whole vlog about our experience in the mines, you can find the link in the description below. It was awful and it took a good while to process what we saw in there, but as much as we couldn't wait to get out, it was a heartbreakingly fascinating part of our stay in Potosi. Another thing you're going to want to do in Potosi is visit the National Mint Museum and learn about the history of the first global currency. This museum is also home to a mysterious mask of a man wearing a crown of grapes which you'll see replicas of all over the city. Hung there in 1865, it's since become Potosi's unofficial emblem, despite no one really knowing exactly who it is or what its meaning is. Most of the silver ship to Spain came through this coinage centre. Today, it has UNESCO World Heritage status and is one of the most important museums in Bolivia. It's a vast and beautifully constructed building that takes up a whole block and has walls more than a metre thick. Inside, you'll see huge mule-driven wood cog constructions used to beat the silver to the width required for coining and hear about the horrific working conditions. Rather gruesomely, there's some mummified Spanish babies on display as well. Bolivia no longer even makes its own money. These days, Bolivian coins are made in Canada and Chile. If you have the time, another thing worth doing in Potosi is venturing out of the city to see the mythical thermal springs of Ojo del Inca in Tarapaya. Supposedly, numerous people have died from swimming in the water here, so the site is actually officially closed. But depending on how good your Spanish is, and for a small fee, you might be able to convince the caretaker to let you take a dip in the smaller side pool that doesn't have any dangerous currents. We had a seriously weird experience here, there's a link to the full vlog in the description, so do watch it before you go. For things to eat in Potosi, make sure you try the Saltenias. The best ones are from a small nondescript shop called Saltenaria El Ornito. And don't miss the visual spectacle of a local soup called Calapurca. 
This delicious corn-based broth comes up bubbling thanks to a boiling hot volcanic rock originating from Cerro Rico itself being dropped into it just before serving. We enjoyed our time in Potosi, but it was a really intense experience, especially doing the mine tour, so we recommend only spending a few days here. It's not really the kind of place you want to hang around in. So we are just getting back into Sucre. Um, yeah, if you liked the video, make sure you like and subscribe so that you don't miss the next adventures that we do. Um, and yeah, drop us a comment, let us know what you think. We've not made a YouTube video for a while, so we are <laughs> laughing at the guy. <laughs> We're interested to know what you what you think. Cheers, see you later.